when the higher stuff starts, I pull the fader down, and then I can introduce the show over the music. A good cue. <laughs> yeah, it's the cue that I've been using for, what, six years? Oh, dang. Excellent. I think that's when I started using this as the opening, the Perfect. theme music. Do people know the name of this track? Um, probably very few people do. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Can I say it? Yeah. Let's all go to a boring meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. Yeah, exclamation. This is, yes, it yeah. is an exclamation point. This is a piece by uh, Jason Palomara, which was on our second album as JCJP. Nice. The album's called Relics. Let's all go to a boring meeting. Yeah. Inspired by his life in academia. Yes, that, that <laughs> seems quite relevant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is I Hear I See Radio episode 130, I'm pretty sure. Dang. Yeah, last month was 129. That's impressive. This used to be a radio show, as you know. Yeah. Because you were on the radio with mm-hmm. me. In fact, you were the first guest Whoa. ever on the show. I don't know if you realize that. I, yeah, no, I don't think I know that. I remember going to that uh, at the KEXP studios, I believe. Carry you on. Oh, carry you on. KEXP yeah. is... Um, <laughs> That's a whole different thing. Yeah, That's Washington that? or think... somewhere in the Northwest. Yeah, is that in Seattle? Perhaps Seattle. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> similar levels of acclaim for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the KRUI studios, it was like, I think it was in January of, oh boy, 20, 2017, mm, 2018. 2018 yeah. Dang. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I started the show in October of 17. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So it used to be a weekly radio show mm-hmm. live on KRUI. Live to everyone in the broadcast area mm-hmm. which is not that big yeah <laughs> but now it's uh well it's sort of died and been resurrected a couple of times now i'm doing it monthly now cool i mean even so 130 that's a lot of episodes yeah that's quite impressive yeah, yeah. uh 130 monthly it's a monthly show yeah. on the rock hard caucus feed sort of like a my attempt at like re inserting myself into the local music community nice <laughs> And I had, I'm setting up the situation we're in now. Mm -hmm. I had an interview lined up with uh, a band, which we had to postpone. But like I said, I want to keep this monthly Mm -hmm. schedule. Uh, And we also suffered a great loss recently with Chris Wearsima. So I didn't feel like trying super hard (laughs) (laughs) to to like make a really important interview or something happen. So I thought, why not? talk to somebody that i'm already very comfortable with which is you nice who's and your name i haven't said yet oh yeah honestly. it's a mystery <laughs> still unless you know my voice very well we haven't introduced you yet no. <laughs> <laughs> but i thought that you and i could have a fairly chill hour just sort of listening to music and talking about yeah. stuff okay now i can probably introduce you this is christine burke everybody hello everyone welcome back to the show this is i mean you were on uh, that episode in january of 2018 which was like i think the 11th or 12th episode of the show yeah and then i think one more after that in a summer month okay i think we recorded it here actually yeah it was over there right yeah exactly yeah, yeah. that was like a more of an interview thing than a ah, right. like a live radio right yeah, yeah yeah is that all that we've done to my memory yes okay but i could be missing something yeah because in you know before 2020 is just like a wash pretty much Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 this is my attempt at rebuilding something nice similar to what we had (laughs) before everything died so today we're gonna uh we're gonna listen to i think we're gonna just pick stuff at random from Bandcamp. we should try that and we also have recordings of uh two new pieces that we recorded the other night at uh, close house yes i'm super excited to hear all of it but I was thinking maybe something random to start yeah, with. Let's do it. Uh, maybe something that neither of us know. And this is an Iowa City band camp, correct? Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, everything on band camp that's tagged with Iowa City as its location. Awesome. And it's in release order, reverse release order now. So like newest releases first. Cool. Do we want to do something truly random where like one of us picks a number or something? No. We count? no, not that, not that. <laughs> there, there is quite a variety of both um, album art and like uh, group group name aesthetics going on here. Yeah, we've got something by Iowa Boys. Yeah, Colton Downing. Yeah, Larry the Wizard Seavers. That caught my you eye. Know him, right? I don't. I don't, you don't? actually okay. know. I don't. Think he's I'm... a. He's like an older guy. He. I see him on the Pedmall a lot. Oh, cool. Uh, he kind of dresses like a pirate. 
So he's okay, an eccentric yeah. uh-huh. community member. Yeah. Nice. He's got tons of stuff on Bandcamp. Oh, dang. He's been recording like um, keyboard medieval oh, yeah. fantasy music <laughs> since like nice. the 80s. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And I, I ran into him like a while ago and he told me that he was uh, still working on transferring everything that he had recorded on tape to digital. Whoa. To put up here. Maybe we should listen to him. Yeah, that's, since I'm talking he sounds about prolific. Him. The most recent thing he put on Bandcamp is an album called Kingdom of Nights. Yep. Which is very f- fantasy. Kingdom of Nights. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little generic, but uh, the, the album art is kick ass. It is. And the font is well selected. It's one of those... Um, I don't know how I would describe it in the most technical of terms, but there's a certain industrial floweriness to it, I mm-hmm. would say. Yeah. Very good font choice. And yeah, really kick-ass art. Whoa. Two yeah. dragons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There's like a, a couple of knights with a pegasus that are on, it may be like a bridge and that's a moat on yeah. either side with dragons in it. Yeah. Water and fire kind of mixing together. Man, this would have been really good for my, uh, my brother ran a D&D campaign for, for us during the pandemic and kind of sad. I'm just running into this now because I think this would have been good, <laughs> good music, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah. 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 It's a reminiscent of Frank Frazetta, the album art. Do you know I, him? I don't know him. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of a Oh, he did a, the cover of a couple of Molly Hatchet albums. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> with, like, with like a Viking on it. Hell yeah. Uh, but very, very much like that, sort of painted looking. Um, okay, there's a lot of tracks on this. Mm-hmm. 18 tracks. Uh, there's a title track, Kingdom of Knights, King Jasper Holds His Council, Lower the Drawbridge, Knights Ride Out. Okay, I, this one's jumping out at me. Fight, Fight. with Honor for the yeah, Realm. Let's, let's do you it. You want to try that one? Yep. Okay, this is track seven from Larry Seaver's uh, Kingdom of Knights, which it says he originally released uh, January 16th of 1998. Oh, so wow. this is okay. kind of old. Uh, again, this is Fight with Honor for the Realm. Cool.
Oh, how about that ending? <laughs> yeah, I like it. That was a transition of sorts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we don't get to hear the next one for now. But yeah, uh, yeah definitely left you curious. Yeah. That little ending. Uh, yeah, I felt like the drums could have been louder. Oh, they yeah. They were kind of pushing the background most of the time. But maybe, I don't know. Maybe I have to didn't say, I don't even... so prominent. Yeah, I didn't even... If you had just asked me, were there drums in that, I would have said no. <laughs> but but only really because quiet, yeah. um, the the synth organ thing had my attention so much Mm -hmm. the entire time. I really liked the timbre of that. Yeah. Yeah. The organ sound is cool. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The drums were in there the whole time. Man, I have to listen to it again. Kind of just looping. It sounded like it was just looping the same four beats the whole time. I don't know. I don't know if that was just in there for him to keep time or (laughs) he really considered it part of the song. Yeah. yeah, That was Larry Seavers with uh, Fight with Honor for the Realm from his album. What was it called? Knights um, of the Kingdom, right? Kingdom King- of Knights. Yes. <laughs> Kingdom of Knights. Okay. So okay. And yeah. the one after that's called Be Knighted and Kiss the Ring. Oh, okay. So that's where the drums were headed, I think. Yeah. It sounded like there was a little bit of a fill. Yeah. Getting us into something new. Wow. The, this this album has 18 tracks. And <laughs> and that one was six and a half minutes by yeah. itself. Yeah. And it looks like maybe an average of four to five minutes per song. It's an incredibly like prolific album for someone who seems to have a lot of albums <laughs> yes out. yes that's really impressive yeah i don't know if this would fit on a cd now that i'm looking at all these track yeah. times question so you said this came out in 1998 how old were you in 1998 uh in january of 98 i was seven. Oh, were you born in 91 i was born in 90 okay so september I of 90 i would have been six okay <laughs> uh yes you had to hear my age to know how old you were <laughs> <laughs> the mental gymnastics of like <laughs> wait like wasn't my birthday yet right, i don't know right. um yeah, the uh, I was thinking six-year-old me would have really liked this. Oh yeah, yeah. This was probably the peak of me playing with the uh, like the knights Lego sets. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The imagination aspect would have connected very thoroughly. Mm. Mm. Not that I don't like it now, because I do. Uh, I wrote down a couple things. Yeah. Um, the first thing that came to mind, and this might be a bit reductive, but. Tangerine Dream has been on my mind a little bit lately. Yeah. Do you know them? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, they did some soundtrack that I liked a lot. Do you know? They did a lot. <laughs> yeah, they, um, were, they, were pretty, they were prolific as well. Yeah, yeah, they really were. My dad loves Tangerine Dream. Uh, and I, I li- like I like them fine. Um, but they've been on my mind lately because I've been in contact with Dylan Marcus McConnell lately. Uh, also known on Instagram as Tiny Little Hammers. Mm-hmm. He designed mm-hmm. all of the Feed Me Weird Things posters. Yeah. And going through his Instagram, I realized uh, he actually designed a Tangerine Dream poster. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's, That's cool. it's awesome. And I don't know if my dad will listen to this episode, but I'm buying it for him as an early Father's Day present. Nice. It's an awesome yeah i didn't realize that's what you were looking at on your phone yeah it was like <laughs> i need to need to pull it up and make sure i get all the names right but um yeah so anyway a bit of a reductive comparison and i just because of the synths it reminded me of, of yeah, sure. Dream a lot. yeah yeah but also the i'm sure it's partially related to just the title of the track but there's like a certain exuberance to that that just reminds me of like you know the time when you started writing music before you knew much about writing music <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was just like joyful when i liked it yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> like that was the best and that's what this reminded me of and that made me very happy in yeah that way. And there's there's kind of a like a constant motion propelling you forward mm-hmm. like he uses a da 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 rhythm which is uh very you know forward moving yeah but somehow not i didn't even feel like there was a lot of repetition in there it seemed like there was a lot of evolution happening Mm -hmm. despite the repetitive elements yeah i don't really know anything about his uh you know compositional strategies (laughs) or anything i I don't know i don't know it seems it seems looking from the outside he's very intuitive yeah yeah yeah, i don't know i would like to talk to him more but he's just a guy that i run into outside sometimes (laughs) yeah not like i i also i looked at googled him while we were listening to and Mm -hmm. it it mentioned you already mentioned the pirate hat but Mm -hmm. they said black and white pirate hat and for some reason that really cemented it and i was like oh yeah i (laughs) have seen this guy it's a really big hat with a big feather usually he wasn't the guy with the parrots was he I don't think so. Okay, that's a different guy. <laughs> yeah, more than one pirate guy yeah. in town, huh? In the pedal. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe now we can listen to one of ours. Oh, yeah. 
I felt like uh, let's listen to something else first and then, then get into our own stuff. Um, so we had a show at Close House uh, on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we shared a show with Short Americans, a quartet from Minneapolis. And uh, you and I both wrote a piece for the Christine Burke Ensemble, yes. which in this ar- incarnation was a quartet. <laughs> uh, you on, well, you on organ for your piece and yeah. clarinet on my piece. Yes. Um, I was playing Barry Sax, Lex Leto was playing flute, and Keegan was playing bassoon. Yeah, that was a killer instrumentation. Yeah. That was a really nice, like, just that collection of instruments is very good. Yeah, we yeah. could all blend into each other pretty well. Yes, yeah. Yeah, even when, with the organ. Actually, especially yeah. with the organ. Yeah, I the organ like the is good I felt like the blending in your that. piece was, uh, we were, like, hiding in each other's sound. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite tricks. Yeah. Uh, so your piece was first, mm-hmm. which... Um, I think you just called it organ plus trio. Something along those lines. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We didn't put much thought into the titles of these. Um, Do you want to say anything before we listen to it? Uh, No, let's listen. Okay, we'll listen. It's it's 11 minutes, so Mm -hmm. it's a little bit long, but uh, we'll listen and then maybe we'll have thoughts about it. Sounds good. Thank you. 
It's so different to listen, just listening instead of playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I hadn't actually listened all the way through yet. I just like did a little bit to yeah. clean it up before bringing it here. Uh, it's funny that you can hear like a dance beat the whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that fades in and out for me a bit. Uh, I think something was going on upstairs. Yeah. That's one of the things I really love about performing in the mansion at Public Space One, particularly, mm-hmm. is the the traffic noise you get because it's yeah, so yeah. often it's right it, on a busy corner. Yeah, yeah, and the noise so often incorporates itself in a way that is nice. <laughs> yeah, it was really when we played that show with Ben Zucker um, mm-hmm. one week ago yeah. tonight. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> feels feels like a longer it, ago. Yes, it does. I don't know. But yeah, the the traffic was blending in with the like electronic stuff he was doing super well. And there was something else. Oh yeah, I mean even the short American set. Like, yeah. Like they were doing this Vondelweiser thing. Yeah. Which I wasn't like that familiar with, but I knew it was quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, quiet and sparse generally. <laughs> yeah, just super sparse and like a car driving by becomes like the dominant sound. Yeah, and in their performance especially there were so many times throughout that that I was like, I have no idea what sound is coming from where. <laughs> and I mean, like you can recognize traffic noises, but they at least two of them were playing recordings. I right. think of themselves maybe or just sometimes some other field recording type things off their phones. Right. And it was like there was one time early on where I think they were playing something that had a bird in it, but yeah. it was so... I was hearing a bird, but I didn't realize they were playing it off their phones. <laughs> right. And it was like, something in this house sounds like a bird. <laughs> it, it was amazing. That, yeah. yeah, their set was so fantastic. And I was in the co-op the other day, the new Pioneer co-op, which is a grocery store. And yeah, like Kimberly and I were still just like, oh my God, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. But yeah, anyway, so this was... Our two pieces were in introduction to their set. Right, right yeah. Uh, so th- what we just heard was Christine's composition, Organ Plus Trio, mm-hmm. um, which I guess to explain a little bit about yeah. what was going on, I had just a Zoom recorder in the center of the room in the mm-hmm. middle of the audience, and we were standing around them, sort of like north, northeast, southwest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Quadrants. Strong um, sound. And you were kind of independent on the uh the organ yep and then the three winds we would play chords together yes yeah so two ongoing processes throughout which is one of the things i like doing just because it sets up nice moments to happen mm-hmm. organically mm-hmm. so yeah you guys had your your rules which were pretty much just um one person within the trio will cue which was lex in mm-hmm. this case i believe so lex cued each chord and originally when we rehearsed the piece, I think I had said any note goes. Right. But after rehearsing it, we decided to narrow it down to, I can't uh, remember. We were playing in B, Dorian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Which others may know as uh, A major. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, in the context of what we were playing, yeah. it was not exactly like functional harmony. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> it was quite functional. Uh, right. So you guys had that process going on and then... On organ, my process was to just kind of fade in and out. Um, I think I let myself technically use any note, but I tried to stay close to you guys because Mm -hmm. I I really like that sneaking in within a sound thing and growing, which this organ does really well, which is also something a clarinet does really well. Yeah. Funnily enough, that informs a lot of music stuff. But anyway, (laughs) so yeah, there are two processes going on. And after a certain amount of time in the piece, I gave the trio the option to defect and to come over to my side so they could come over and stand by me look at the notes that i'm playing on the organ and try to join me at kind of the apex um volume wise of each note and yeah they could all have abandoned the chords if they wanted but only justin did yeah in the performance. I did. really pretty close to the end too mm-hmm. i didn't yeah. defect until the last couple minutes yeah and yeah <laughs> i was thinking about how any of the defectors would have this additional challenge of like, they can look at my hands and see what keys I'm playing. That is not the pitch that is coming out yeah. of the organ. At the end, I could hear, I, I sort of vaguely remember this. I think I was playing a C sharp on my instrument, trying oh, to man. match your E. Oh, God. And I was so flat from where you were. And I could hear it in the recording that I was like trying to like 
like, wrench it up. It, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that is certainly, Keegan had that experience in our rehearsal a few days prior to that, mm-hmm. that he was just like, what note are you <laughs> playing? <laughs> is that why he didn't defect? He didn't it want could, to do it, it could again. be, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or maybe he was just waiting to see if anyone else would, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that organ is, I love that thing. It is not in tune with itself or anyone else. Yeah, so, it's hard to yeah. play, you know, like normal music yeah. with that thing. Yeah, it's that's got its very own true. system, <laughs> and it cha- it seems like it changes quite often. And even during that performance, there was a, an extra pitched hum in there. You can kind of hear it at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. I don't know what pitch that was, but yeah. Anyway, that sounded super lovely. I'm very happy with that. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of environment in that recording. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking we should try something else. Yeah, let's do it. Before we play my piece, too. Right. Um, have you heard about this, Monty and the Monsters? No, but I love that name. Okay, yeah. Uh, Dan Miller was telling me about this when I had him on this show a couple months ago. Great. So this is something that um, is sort of an ongoing project being recorded at his studio. Nice. Um, so, And I haven't listened to this uh, or the previous release either. But um, we're looking at The Riots by Monty and the Monsters. Uh, It's a five-track thing, so you'd probably classify this as like an EP. Mm -hmm. The band description is a rock band from Shitty City, USA. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And yeah, this is sort of like a a really ongoing rock opera thing is what Dan was telling me. Nice. Um, So do any of these five tracks appeal to you title-wise? Okay, let me see. Ooh, I'm, I'm stuck between track four, which is called Billy Bob Will Never See His Ray Gun Again. Um, and track five, which is called Billions of These People. That's a very good title. Yeah. So what do you think between those? Yeah. I mean, we're going to be probably like missing some context regardless of what we pick here. But I True. think Billions of These People yeah. sounds pretty interesting. Awesome. Um, there's a, a little album description here. The oligarchs have placed a ban on the creation of art. How will shitty city react? <laughs> so here's, this is the closer from the riots, uh, Billions of These People by Monty and the Monsters. Billions of these people are shipping their man. Pass around the baskets Send us to the casket Cause they've got a way To delegate the play Hey, 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 hey <sighs> Millions of those people Graves of their Remember my 
That was very theatrical. Yes, it was. But <laughs> I'm normally not into that kind of thing, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, that. that was fun. Yeah. Uh, very interesting sort of vocal styles. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. playing a character. Like, you can hear it's, I think, yes. right? <laughs> I, that's what I was trying. I was, as I was listening, I was like, oh, yes, a rock opera would be probably somewhat similar to a musical. Mm-hmm. Were there two people singing? <laughs> I don't know if there were two people, but it definitely sounded like two it's supposed to be two different points of view, right? It may have been the yeah, same person singing both parts. Yeah. Yeah. The voice cuz the, the voices voice, were it similar, sounds really yeah. Close. yeah. Uh-huh. It might be the same guy singing two characters. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool though. I I'm, in, cool. I'm interested in, you know, hearing more of that. Yeah, that's a big form. A rock opera? Yeah. Like, that's a yeah. Yeah. So it look I mean, I think they're like releasing it in sort of episodes, right? There's Oh, I see. This one called The Monsters from a few months ago, mm-hmm. and then The Riots is this newer one that we were oh, just listening true. from. And yeah, the monsters is also six tracks, so it's sort of like I don't know an episodic rock opera. Maybe mm-hmm. I'd have to ask Dan for more details. I don't know. Yeah, and the the titles of the pieces seem yeah they definitely support that. Yeah, <laughs> the track four on the monsters is called a show, <laughs> and it sounds good too. the The vocals are like mixed really up front. So I know, as far as I know, Dan did all the work on that. So good yeah. job, Dan. <laughs> it sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds very professional. Yeah. I'm I'm honestly surprised I enjoyed that as much as I did. <laughs> That's at montyandthemonsters.bandcamp.com for anyone listening to us right now. Monty is a name... That's like in my head for potential cat or child names. Mm, yeah. Wow. Both, Monty. huh? <laughs> yeah. Cat or child. It's one that works for Whichever, humans yeah. or animals. <laughs> Monty, uh, well, there's Montgomery Burns from The Simpsons, of course, oh, who's right. sometimes called Monty. Mm-hmm. But um, do you ever watch Tiny Toons? The like Looney Tunes I've seen spin it. off of like the kids? I've seen it, but I don't think... I've seen it, but it, not as much as I saw Looney Tunes itself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling that there's like this like small, rich kid in that show. <laughs> I think his name was Monty. That would make <laughs> That's a ton what of comes sense. to mind when yeah. I think the name Monty. That is a rich kid name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A cartoon rich kid name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can listen to my piece now. Yes. We could anyway, um, which I titled A Wind Quartet. Mm-hmm. So Christine switched from organ over to clarinet. Yeah. And this is also kind of like two processes happening at the same time. Similar form to yours. Mm -hmm. But I had a part one and a part two. And you wrote yours first. (laughs) So you were copying (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So in this one, uh, there's like a common tone that's being uh, played just endlessly by one instrument. Mm -hmm. In part one, it was me on the Barry sax. In part two, it was Christine on the clarinet. And then the other three instruments are playing three other tones to build a chord with the common tone Mm -hmm. throughout. I've been teaching music theory for the past (laughs) few months, you know, freshman music theory. So I've been uh, really immersed in like four part harmony stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a very tonal piece, Mm -hmm. which is out of the ordinary for me. Yeah. And notated and (laughs) yeah, Mm -hmm. there's a bit of a freedom to it, but it, it's more written than what I usually do. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
big cadence. Yeah, a nice, powerful ending <laughs> with that bassoon and the low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it sounds really cool. It's awesome. Uh, and I was worried that I had written the flute part too low. I don't know if you remember that from my I email. Do, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and Lex was like, no, it's fine. And then they were right. It is fine. Yeah, actually, <laughs> one of the two things I wrote down on my notepad, the first one is Lex's beefy low tones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah. really good. It, yeah, it's, yeah, it's awesome. I've been scrolling through all of the stuff on the band camp. I was going to see if I could just scroll down until I saw the Death Bag album, oh, but I kind of yeah. wanted to play something off of that. For sure. Um, so Death Bag is a, a duo, Chris Wiersma and uh, Gabby Vanek, both friends of ours. And as I said at the near the beginning of our mm-hmm. conversation tonight, uh, Chris passed away recently. So I kind of wanted to listen to something off of that just yeah. as a some kind of acknowledgement mm-hmm. i don't know um i might just have to type in the url yeah. <laughs> at this point i just keep scrolling and oh, i'm like two it. years back now oh there's wombat yeah yeah tapas the, nice. that was uh that was a while that, ago. we're coming up on two years of that Dang. actually yeah we were just mm-hmm. talking about doing something for the <laughs> two-year anniversary absolutely of tapas, the i'd wombat. go to that party <laughs> Uh, okay, death bag. Here is death. Oh, that's the wrong death bag. Oh, okay. There's a death bag in Washington D.C. <laughs> oh, okay. While Justin <laughs> this is, the one is I well, while Justin is pulling that up, I do want to say about Justin's piece, mm. the like stasis element of it is so great. With the, so the stasis element being Justin at first playing that repeated note, and then it switches to me. But I love that and how it like holds you in the middle of these changing chords in mm-hmm. a way that's really like. There's a tension to it, but it's ex- uh, extremely comforting at the same time. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that that worked. Yeah. Because I really think that's did. kind of the idea going mm-hmm. in to keep a common tone throughout. It's sort of like tension happens, but because it's a tension built off of a stasis, it's yeah. like not super tense. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> yeah. I think I said this. I, ha- I said this to somebody recently, uh, my friend Noah Jenkins in Chicago. Anyway, it's like, something really lovely that also has teeth a little bit and it's just like a very compelling way to keep people Mm. there yeah Yeah. it's great i loved it and while you were saying that i remembered i wanted to show you the cover of molly hatchett's flirting with disaster oh my god (laughs) so that's a frank frazetta painting wow oh that guy has jacked calves i might use that as like the episode art for this please (laughs) that's amazing cover (laughs) thank you okay so this uh this death bag release um January of 22. So I was almost there when I was scrolling oh, down. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, this was recorded live at Trumpet Blossom. I believe we were both there. Well, for yeah, that, I right? think and I your noticed name the is other in day. the description. Yeah, uh-huh. there. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think all I did was lend them my Zoom. So that <laughs> seems like a lot of credit for a very <laughs> yeah, easy. You, uh, you got credit for. I think I got a recording credit. Yes, it says uh, recorded from board and live room by Christine Burke. <laughs> that, that is extremely generous. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you were there, right? Yeah. I this vaguely was... remember this. Uh, it was recorded November 11th of 2021. Oh, right. With, and I, um, I have a video of them playing from that night. I think, I, I, oh, I likely do too. I should yeah. look for that. Um, that show was awesome. Yeah. Uh, supporting Bill with Tom Nguyen, it says. Yeah. That was the guy who played drums like, like in on the, the middle, floor, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Yeah. One of the, the earlier Feed Me Word things coming back, mm-hmm. you know, after the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, actually... I'm going to plug here really quickly mm-hmm. at the music library. We are going to do an exhibit of like 20 feed me word things posters. Is that why you've been talking to the tiny little Yeah, Amherst? exactly. Yeah. Um, cool. I can't remember if this is on the list or not. I was trying to get a good, both aesthetic combination and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. um, please stop by the music library. They're going to be displayed prominently. They're going to look amazing because the poster designs are they're very nice. Yeah. They're so I've always been impressed by those. Yeah. And yeah. now, and now that I've collected them, it's like each season a feed me weird things has it's like the artwork is the season too <laughs> yeah, and yeah you see very, very distinct yeah. changes yeah between each season yeah um the uh the 2018 season which was the first time that i played on mm-hmm. feed me weird things all the posters were sort of like um like cassette label designs. oh that's yeah. what, like because they're kind of do oh yeah, yeah that makes sense yeah yeah anyway stop by the music library come check it out you'll be able to qr code to all the artists that are on these posters oh, that's and, really cool yeah yeah it'll be great by uh music library she means the university of oh, iowa yes. <laughs> uh music library and mm-hmm. voxman music building yes um yeah so i we were at the show but mm-hmm. i have not actually listened to the recording of it mm-hmm. so i don't know which of these tracks is like what <laughs> uh 
which one do you think we should listen to? I mean, <laughs> that one definitely jumps out at me. The slavering filth pig. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you want to try that? Yep. Okay, so this is a uh, slavering filth pig by Death Bag, um, a, a tribute to Chris Weirsma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I know that uh, he and Gabby had been working on like a proper album, which I mm-hmm. think is like nearly ready for public consumption. So yeah, watch out for that in the near future. Probably mm-hmm. um, it'll be. It's going to sell really well now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> Congrats, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's one way to do uh, it, I guess. Yeah. Not worth it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> okay, here's a slavering filth pig by <laughs> Death Bag. <laughs>
that's the beginning of term uh terminal burrowing ah, oh, <laughs> they kind of man. bleed into each other i forgot <laughs> to mention the album is called stoop goblin sweet <laughs> great titles i was thinking this that was really the perfect track to pick because it pretty much tied together everything we listened to today yeah it really did of honestly the, the yeah. synths and then we have Gabby's beefy low notes. Yeah, which, I was thinking oh the same God. thing. Oh, my God. Sounds yeah. really good in that oh, recording. Amazing. Yeah. 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 And then what was... The, oh, tension. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially at the end there. Man. When Gabby goes up real high. Yeah. And it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's her full range in that. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I, it was so lyrical. And it's hilarious. Yeah. Like, um, oh, boy, what's the word? Are you thinking juxtaposition? Yes, thank you. Because I was thinking the exact same yep. word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. That's, yeah. I don't think I would have gotten there without help, so thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that we were on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Between the title and the music. <laughs> uh, again, that was, is it slavering or slavering? Uh, I guess I don't know. I don't really know what that word means. I don't know. I'm going to look it up. That we, <laughs> we're really digging into this it. Is educational. But yeah, the juxtaposition between the title Slavering Filth Pig and like the beauty of that track. Yeah. <laughs> and and the beauty of the band Death Bag playing that also. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I haven't listened back to this, but I was at the show and I do remember that. I remember that moment being like, "Oh my god, like they <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is like so nice." <laughs> yeah. Uh did you remember that this was the track that did that? <laughs> uh no, no. I don't think they told us any titles or anything no, the I night of. I, I I'm not sure if I'm remembering this from this show or if it was a different Deathbag show where Gabby plays part of the Mozart bassoon concerto. <laughs> I think that happened. I think that happened earlier in this show. Yeah, maybe. I don't remember. Um, okay, I don't so remember I, that part. I looked up. Okay, is it going to tell us how to pronounce it? Slaver. Slaver. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's uh, slavering. Um, uh, <laughs> and what that means is. I hope the mic picked that up really well. <laughs> Should I do, do, it again? Yeah, do it again? <laughs> slaver. <laughs> um, so that would be slavering. Slavering, then, right? uh, which means to let saliva run from the mouth. Yeah, so the example they give is the Labrador was slavering at the mouth. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, they should change that to the filth pig. The filth pig. <laughs> <laughs> that should be in the dictionary. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'll write. I'll. I'll email them. Yeah. Let them know. Yeah. Google. Um. Yeah. <laughs> well, I usually let music like have the final word mm-hmm. on the show. So before we play something else, mm-hmm. um, we should have our our final words. Yes. You know. Um. Do you have anything coming up that you want to plug? I don't think so. <laughs> except for, I mean. Please stop by. This is the Rita Benton Music Library. Mm -hmm. Stop by. We're hoping to have this up by the end of the week if the paper comes in soon. Cool. Um, But it should be up for about three weeks. And so it'll be up during Mission Creek. Oh, yeah. Right. That's That's good. Serendipitous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So that in it, even if the library is closed, you'll be able to see it. So it'll just kind of be on the outside windows of the library. So that's one thing I'd like to plug. Um, I believe we are going to have a show on May 18th. Location is I TBD. So well. <laughs> um, but that will be the Christine Burke Ensemble by way of Justin, me, Lex, Mark, and Levi. And I think we're playing all new pieces from everyone except me. I don't think I'm writing anything for mm, that one. But everyone, everyone else is? Yeah, everyone else is. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I'm super excited for yeah. that. And we will be opening for a trio of Corey Reader. Andrew Weathers and um, Ryan Seward. Okay. Yeah. So, Ryan Seward. I feel like right? I know him. Yeah, I think I think that's one of uh, <laughs> internet connections. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like yeah. one of those like we've been Facebook friends for a long time. Okay. I don't think I've ever met him though. Yeah. So yes, that should be coming up on May 18th. Location TBD. Yeah. If we figure out uh, where that's happening, you'll see it online. <laughs> <laughs> And if you you if you own a venue, yeah, and you're listening yeah, hey. to this, <laughs> let us know if you'd like us to play there. Uh, we're also, I mean, we've been working on an album for a long oh my time. God, yeah. I don't know if, how much we should talk about that since it's not ready, but well, yeah, that should hopefully be ready before the end of 2024. Yeah, I, that's I the think goal. So. We're, yeah, mm-hmm. we've recorded ninety uh, percent of it. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, um, yeah. What do you what do you have coming up? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go to my website, justinkcomer.com. And yeah. that's, if stuff is happening, I put it up there or I try to, mm. um, anything jumping out at you to, okay, for a closing see. track? Uh, so someone with a bloody face Ooh. on the ground. I don't know what that is. I like is. this picture. Disregard yeah. me by 34. 
Disregard Me by 34%. Let's see what that is. This is I don't know who this is. I don't know what this is. At least I don't think so. Uh, released November 26th of 2021. Uh, 34% did all. That's the credits on that one. <laughs> so nice. uh, it looks like it's an electronic, ambient, uh, experimental, perfect, hyper pop, vapor wave. Those are some of the tags on the album there. We got five tracks, Frostbitten, Through the Vapor, To Be Ignored, Just Don't, and Disregard Me. Just don't. Just don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's track four of five. All right. Well, um, do you have any predictions for this since we're not going to talk okay, afterwards? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this will be our hmm. p- our review before we hear it. If there's bassoon in this, I will be <laughs> incredibly... We might have to come back on Yeah, that. I think <laughs> that, would, that would require that. Um, yeah. That's all I have for this. What yeah, about you? Just, just don't. Um, I'm expecting... Uh, I'm expecting a 4-4 four, four <laughs> <laughs> percussion, <laughs> which I like. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if we're right. And um, you you be the judge, listeners, because mm-hmm. you're not going to hear from us again. Thank you, Christine, <laughs> for coming on. This has been I Hear I See Radio episode yeah. 130. Nice. Thank you.